So I'm going to just plug it into my calculator. First of all, I have to make sure that it's ready for the calculator. So let's look. Does it say either equals 0 or equals y? As long as it says equals 0 or equals y, it's ready to graph, it's ready to factor, whatever. So the first one tells me to solve by graphing. So I'm going to go to the y equals and I'm going to type that equation in. x squared minus x minus 12. And you cannot see that. So x squared minus x minus 12. And I can do this a variety of ways, but I'm just going to look at its graph. So if I hit graph, do you know what the solutions are? Can you tell? Um, positive, four and positive 4 and negative 3. Wherever the graph touches the x-axis, those are your solutions, also called roots, also called zeros, also called x-intercepts. So when x is 4, that's an answer. So I'm going to write x equals 4. And when x is a negative 3, that's another answer. I also want you to know how to find your answers in a table. So when the graph touches the x-axis, what's your y value here and your y value here? Zero. Zero. So if I go and I look in the table, if I want to find the solutions from a table, I want to be looking for zeros and there they are. When you see the zero in the y column, you can see that one of your answers is negative 3, which we saw visually, and the other answer is positive 4. So if you're looking at a table and you want to know what your solutions are, you want to look for zeros in the y column and the answers are whatever the x's are. Okay, I'm just going to draw a, a real rough sketch of this. So it crosses the x-axis at negative 3 and it crosses the x-axis at 4. So crosses at negative 3, it crosses at 4, and I'm just going to draw a rough sketch. Do you think I can't hear all of those cubes? No. Stop playing with the cubes. I, I get that, but we're not doing cubes. So buy some cubes and play with them at home. You probably used a minus sign instead of a negative, or a negative sign instead of a minus sign. That's what I would imagine. Okay, if I want to solve the same one by factoring, let's make sure it says equals zero. Does it say equals zero? Okay, so let's solve by factoring this time. First rule, GCF. Do I have one? Second thing, two terms or three? Three terms, so I'm going to do what? Mm -hmm. AC rooftop. So A times C makes how much? Negative 12. What do I want them to add to B? Negative 1. And what two numbers do that? Mm -hmm. A negative 4 and a positive 3. Can I shortcut or is this the long one? I can shortcut because of the 1 in front. So it's going to go x with a minus 4 and it's going to go x with a positive 3. And then there it is, it's factored. Now to solve, I just bring down my equal 0 and we do what we talked about yesterday and then also on Friday. So if I set x minus 4 equal to 0, what do I get? A positive 4. If I set x plus 3 equal to 0, what do I get? Negative 3. Is that where the graph touched the x-axis? Okay, so this is two ways to get the same answers. I showed this to you yesterday, and today we're going to learn a third way. So, like I said yesterday, if this was some standardized test, some multiple choice test, and it just said solve, and it was some quadratic, if you just want to graph it and see where it touches the x-axis, that's perfectly fine. Some problems are really super easy to factor, though, and so you could factor it and get your answer real quick. This guy down here is called the quadratic formula, and the thing about this formula, I know it looks really ugly. It's this whole thing right here. I really don't want to do it. Well, you may not, but we're going to. The thing about this formula, it solves all kinds of quadratics. Graphing is only nice if it touches the x-axis in really nice spots. Factoring is only nice if the problems actually factor. Because we've seen problems that don't factor, right? The quadratic formula solves them all. It solves the ones that give you answers of like 0.43. Whereas if you had this uh, cross the x-axis at a 0.43, it'd be hard to figure out that that was a 0.43. So the quadratic formula, it solves ones that give you like decimal answers. It solves the ones that don't factor. It gives you ones that have, um, in Algebra 2, you'll learn about imaginary solutions. So this one solves everything. Okay, do you know the tune, um, Pop Goes the Weasel? Mm -hmm. 
Um, All around the collar's bench, the monkey chased the weasel. You know that song? Yeah, I mean, I know, I don't know the lyrics. Okay. Yeah, but you kind of know the tune. Pop goes the weasel. All right, so I'm going to sing this to you, and then I'm going to have you guys sing with me to the tune of uh, Pop Goes the Weasel. I will say this instead of negative B, I'm going to say it the opposite of B. I just think it's helpful if we think of this as the opposite of B. So it goes X equals the opposite of B plus or minus square root. B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Oh, I like it. Okay, so, quite honestly, ever since I learned the song, I can't do a problem without singing the song like in my head. So, X equals the opposite of B plus or minus square root. B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Okay, let's try it again. I'll slow down. X equals the opposite of B. Plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. They're all over 2A. Yeah, all over 2A. So um, when I was in school, we had to memorize everything. We had to memorize every single formula that there was. We were never given, you know, like formulas for tests. Or I don't think everybody needs to stand up. I I agree. I just know I we're going to run short on time. Up, that does happen too. <laughs> okay, I want to do it one more time because I just want to make sure we have time to get in what we actually need to get into. Do you guys want to stand up and sing? Yes, everybody has to stand up. That's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Why not? Cindy, you one of the yeah. Cindy, definitely Cindy. All right, if you want to stand up and sing, stand up and sing. If you don't stand up, if you don't, up, if you could just like try to sing like <laughs> quietly at your desk. Okay. X equals the opposite of B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Okay, so this solves all quadratics. And do you know what I mean when I say quadratics? It solves all your x squared problems, all your r squared problems, all your t squared problems. As long as that's the highest exponent in the problem, those are called quadratic. So when the highest exponent is a 2 in the problem, those are quadratics. And this equation solves them all. It solves the ones that do factor. It solves the ones that don't factor. It solves all the decimal answers. It solves all the ones that give you um, uh, imaginary solutions, which you won't learn about until Algebra 2. Okay, and then we've talked about where A, B, and C are located, so hopefully this is no surprise. A is in front of the x squared, B is in front of the x, and C is the constant. So we have talked about that before, and so that's what they're looking for are those letters. Okay, is this problem right here the same as the two up above? Can you two please stop talking? Is this the same problem as the two up above? Okay, so we already know the answers, but this time we're going to solve it with the quadratic formula. So first thing I want to do is I want to identify the A, the B, and the C, and I do have to make sure that these say equals 0 or equals Y. So what's the A in this problem? One. A 1. What's the B? Negative 1. Negative 1. And what's the C? Negative 12. Negative 12. Okay, so then the formula tells you take the opposite of B, and what did we say B was? Negative 1 plus or minus square root b squared. Okay, so what's the b? Negative 1. It is, and so this will turn into the opposite of b. Uh, typically, I don't show all my work like this, but this is how the notes are. So, like, if you took the opposite of b, what would you get if you took the opposite of b? You get a positive 1. Well, does a negative negative 1 make a positive 1? So you have to look at the negative on the outside to make it... Yeah, in a minute, when this skeleton isn't there... Like these guys, they don't have the skeleton. I'll just go ahead and just take the opposite of B in my head. Yes, Greg? What is the plus or the minus sign? Because there's two answers. Uh, we'll, um, we'll get one answer using the plus, and we'll get the second answer using the minus. Because you see how when the highest exponent is a 2, most of the time we get two separate answers. So I want two answers, so the plus will give me one of them, and the minus will give me the other one. Okay, so minus 4AC. What's your A? One. one, what's your C? Negative 12, all over 2A. And what's A? One. Okay, so what I'm going to have you do, I'm not going to have you put the square root in your calculator. All I'm going to have you do is type everything that's under the square root in your calculator, just like we see right there. So if you don't have a calculator, you need one. 
So I'm going to go to the um, calculator screen. I'm going to go parenthesis, negative 1, close it, squared. Minus 4, parenthesis, put the 1 in there. Parenthesis, put a negative 12 in there. And I'm just going to type in everything that I see under the square root. But I'm not putting the square root in the calculator. And there's a reason for me not to do that. So I'm just typing in everything that's under the square root, and that's called the discriminant, which you'll learn more about in Algebra 2. Okay, and then I hit enter, and what do you get? 49. 49. Okay, so I'm going to clean some house here. So does everybody agree that this made a positive 1? Yeah. Then I recopy the plus minus. I need to put the square root, and we found that it was 49. The thing that we calculated underneath was 49. And then all over 2a. What do you get when you take 2 times 1? Two. 2. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to see if we can actually take the square root of this and get something pretty. Can you take the square root of 49 and get something pretty? 7. Mm -hmm, the square root of 49 is 7. So now I'm going to write this 1 plus or minus 7. And then I'm just going to recopy the all over 2. And now we're going to get our two answers. Since I don't have any square roots, I can just do all this in my head. I'm going to get my two answers, first using the plus and then using the minus. Okay, so if I first use the plus, uh, I don't know if I can cover it. I'll just cover it up. If I use the plus, what's 1 plus 7? 8. What's 8 divided by 2? Okay, so one of our answers would be x equals 4. Okay, now I'm going to do it with the, the minus sign. So if I use the minus sign... That's not there. What's 1 minus 7? Negative 6. And what's negative 6 divided by 2? Negative 3. Do we get the same answers that we got by graphing and by factoring? Okay, it's just another method for solving quadratics. But the quadratic formula solves all quadratics. Factoring does not. Graphing does not. But the quadratic formula will solve them all. Is there, like, millions of ways that you could do things that, like, people only figure out if you... Not always, but... There's, there's several ways to do lots of things. This yeah. is pretty tough. Um, it's tough the first few times, but quite honestly, you're just plugging everything into a formula, like length times width. It's just you have more things going on than that. Okay. Flipping the paper. Um, remember, all three methods of solving quadratics, we've got factoring, quadratic formula, and graphing. They give you your solutions. What else do we call those guys besides solutions? Roots. What else do we call them? X-intercepts. Uh -huh, and I heard the other one. Somebody said it. Zeros. Uh-huh. Because this is the only thing that you do do. Okay, I want to write down our formula. So I'm going to sing while I write. And you can sing with me. You ready? And that's the thing about the song. It's to help you remember. Like... If, if I had m as much time as I wanted, we would have sang it so many times that it would be stuck in your head all day. That would be my ultimate goal. No, because we're going to write. So, x equals the opposite of b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. 2a. <laughs> But the more you sing it, the more you'll remember it, and then you don't have to stress about it. Okay, uh, the directions do remind you that they need to say equals zero first or equals y. So does number one say equals zero? Yes. Okay, first thing I want to do is I want to identify my a, my b, and my c, and then I'll plug them in like the formula tells me. Okay, so what is the a in this problem? Mm -mm. It's the number in front of the x squared. The a is a positive one because that's what's in front of the x squared. You just don't see it. What's the B? 11. 11. What's the C? 24. 24. Okay, now I'm just going to do exactly what the formula tells me. So I'm going to write this one slightly different than we did on the front. So it says take the opposite of B. What's the opposite of 11? A negative 11. And if this would have been a negative 11, what would the opposite of that have been? Positive. Then this would have been a positive 11. Okay, plus or minus square root. Okay, I'm going to put my B in parentheses with the squared. What's the B over here? 11. 11. And it's not the opposite of B. It's actually what B is. So B is 11. Minus 4AC. So what is A? 1. What is C? 24. All over 2A. And I'm actually going to take 2 times A in my head. What's 2 times A? 
Two. Two. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to have us do is everything that's under the square root, shove that in your calculator. Everything that's under the square root, put that in your calculator. Let's see what you get. And did you get 25? I did get no. 25. I did not. Does your calculator look like mine? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's me. Do you have a negative instead of a minus? Yes. Okay. So be careful. This is a minus. This is not a negative. This is a minus. Minus 4ac. Okay. So I'm going to recopy the x equals negative 11. I'm going to recopy the plus minus. I'm going to recopy the square root. What did we calculate underneath that square root? 25. And I'm going to recopy the divide by 2. Okay, next thing I want to do is see if I can actually take the square root of 25 and get something pretty. Can I take the square root of 25 and get something pretty? It's a 5. Okay, so I'm going to recopy the negative 11, the plus or minus. Now that's just a 5, so it's just a 5 all over 2. And now, because there's no square roots, I can get two nice answers. So first I'm going to use the plus, and then I'll use the minus. When I use the plus, what's negative 11 plus 5? Negative what's negative 6 <laughs> divided by 2? Okay, so negative 3 is one of our answers. Now I'm going to use the minus. What's negative 11 minus 5? Negative 16 divided by 2? Negative 8. And there I have it. Zach, what were you going to ask me? Oh, I thought you had your hand up. Okay. Number two, does it say equals zero? Okay, as long as it says equals zero, we are ready to begin. And begin by either any of those methods, graphing, factoring, or quadratic formula. Okay, um, what's the A? Negative two. What's the B? Negative four. And what's the C? Three. Three. The other day when we were factoring, I did not ever want my x squared to be a negative. With the quadratic formula, it really doesn't matter so much. But when you're factoring, let's not have the x squared be negative. Okay, so now I'm going to do what the formula tells me. So x equals the opposite of b. What's the opposite of b this time? Four. A positive 4. Plus or minus square root. What's b? Oh, sorry. Parentheses squared. What's the b? Negative 4. Negative 4 squared. Minus 4ac. What's the a? Negative 2. What's the c? 3. Three. All over 2a. And I'm going to go ahead and do 2a in my head. So what's 2 times a? Negative 4. Because 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Okay, so now everything that's in that square, underneath that square root, take a moment and shove that in your calculator because it's all over 2a so I take 2 times my a 2 times negative 2 okay so put that in your calculator the negative 4 squared minus 4 times negative 2 times 3 do you have it? I'll show you. What'd you get? 40. Okay, you should have got 40. Okay, so I'm going to recopy um, my x equals, my 4, my plus or minus, my square root. I'm going to put the 40 underneath there, and I'm going to put the divide by negative 4. Okay, this time, can you take the square root of 40 and get something pretty? No. You can't. Okay, quite honestly, one way, I'm going to leave my answer like this, and then I'm going to show you two times a, when you took two times your a, two times negative two was negative four. Yeah, I was just, I thought it was on top of the problem. Oh, oh, I got you. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and box this up, because sometimes you see your answer is like this. In Algebra 2, you're going to actually learn how to simplify the square root of 40, and you'll simplify the square root of 40 and get something that would say 4 plus or minus 2 square root of 10 all over negative 4. 
but you'll learn that in algebra too. So I'm going to leave it like this since I couldn't take the square root of it, and now I'm going to show you how you can get decimals. So to get decimals, first I'm going to put my numerator in with the plus. So in your calculator, let's go 4 plus square root of 40. How do you do square root? Square root is in blue above the x squared, so you'll go second x squared. Second x squared will give you the square root symbol. So I'm going to go 4 plus the square root of 40. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And then I need to divide by negative 4, right? So divide by negative 4. And let's round to the nearest tenths. What would you tell me if you rounded to the nearest tenths? Negative 2.6. Good. So x and I'm, these two little squiggles means approximately negative 2.6. It wasn't exactly a negative 2.6. It's approximately. So that's what those two squiggles mean. Okay, now I need to get my other answer. So what do you think I'll do to get my other answer? 4 minus. Four minus. Okay, so this time I'm going to go 4 minus square root of 40. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And then... Negative 2 approximately... No, 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 I'm not done yet. Divide by negative 4. Divide by negative four and approximately 0.6. Yes. Okay, I'm going to help Haley real quick. So, these are the decimal answers. This is another way of writing the answer. Um, I want you to take a second and make sure that number 3 says equals 0. So, take a moment and fix number 3 so it says equals 0. Okay, so what do you do to make that say equal zero? You would add seven to both sides. So if I add seven to both sides, can you tell me what my um, new equation would say? Good, plus seven equals zero. Okay, and then if I would um, start this, I would start off with my A, my B, and my C. How much is A? Six. Six. How much is B? Negative three. Negative three. How much is C? Seven. seven. Okay, and then I just kind of start to sing my song. So, x equals the opposite of b. What's the opposite of b? Three, three, not a positive 3 plus or minus square root. And then I'm going to put my b in parentheses squared, b squared. So, b is a what? Negative, Negative 3 minus 4ac. So, what is a? 6. Six. What is c? 7 all over 2a. What's 2 times a? 12. Take a moment. Work that out. And I'm going to pass out your comments that I know you don't want. Oh, sorry. You did. Monday. I know, but you didn't have any homework, did you? No. You didn't have any homework Monday night for me. Oh, it was Friday. And last week when you guys took your test on Thursday, you didn't have any homework for me. You need to put that negative three in front of you. Okay. Well, then you divide it by 12. What'd you get? You did square it. Okay, what did you guys get? A negative 159. Okay, so it would go 3 plus or minus square root of negative 159 divided by 12. Can you take the square root of that and get anything pretty? No. No. Did anybody try putting 3 plus the square root of a negative 159 in their calculator? 3 plus the square root of negative 159. Okay. As of right now, you cannot have negatives under square roots. Okay? In Algebra 2, you're going to learn how to deal with that. And it involves the imaginary number system. But as of right now, if you ever see a negative underneath the square root, we're going to write no real roots. There's no real solutions. No real roots. So if you ever see a negative under the square root, then you're not going to be able to work it out. As of right now, in Algebra 2, you'll learn um, how to do that. 
Okay, hang on. I'm not going to make you do this whole assignment. So let me, let's look for a bit. Uh, okay, I want you to do number um, two and four. So on the front, do two and four. Make sure these say equal zero first. Flip it over. Um, I'm going to have you do number six. Okay, the rest of this is uh, review, but I'm just going to have you do 7, 8, and 9, and then we can do 10 together. So 6, 7, 8, and 9. 7, 8, and 9, those are just review. 7 is review of factoring, 8 is review of factoring, and 9 is just talking about area. Okay, so you only have 1, 2, 3. Three problems to do by quadratic formula. Okay? All right, have a good day. Um, yeah, she took it. Um, I think they said no bells. No bells. No, no music. No oh, no music. Can oh, we do have bells? Yeah. Can oh. I take this? Never mind. Grade, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, I should probably take this late last yesterday. I don't know what you said, but I did it last night. Oh, okay. It's okay. 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 Thank you. Mm -hmm.